from the Fox News Radio Studios in New York City, giving you opinions and facts with a positive approach. It's Brian Kilmeade. In for Brian, it's Mary Walter. Hey, good morning. Yes, I am Mary Walter sitting in for Brian Kilmeade today on the Brian Kilmeade Show. Before we move on, I just wanted to give you an update on Sri Lanka and the bombings there. Uh, they're, they are now invoking emergency powers. Uh, they are blaming militants with foreign links for the explosions. As of right now, 290 people killed, nearly 500 wounded. They do expect those numbers to go up. Two Americans killed in the bombings. Now, by invoking this emergency law, the police and the military have extensive powers now to detain and interrogate suspects without court Orders. That goes into effect midnight on Monday, Sri Lankan time. Police said they found 87 bomb detonators were found at the city's main bus station in Colombo, Sri Lanka. An explosive device went off near a church with that where someone had uh, detonated a suicide vest inside that church on Sunday. And they were trying and it went off when um, bomb squad officials were trying to defuse it. There's a curfew tonight going into effect at 8 p.m. They also shut down all social media, and they did that because they had done it previously in 2018 to prevent Islamic militants from communicating with each other during a suspected uh, attack that was going to be coming. Police received a tip-off. This is interesting. Police received a tip-off on its, on a, a possible attack on churches by a, a domestic Islamic Islamist group. They received this from India, Indi, Indian uh, foreign intelligence. They received this about 10 days ago. The intelligence report was dated April 11th and said a foreign intelligence agency had warned authorities of possible attacks on churches by the leader of the group, the National Thahid Jamuat. And they don't know, we don't know yet what action, if any, was taken on the tip off 24 people in all have been arrested it was 13 as of this morning now we're up to 24 all Sri Lankans they did not give any more details than that we also know that three police officers were killed when they raided uh, what they thought was a house where they were making the bombs and sure enough they were and uh, the people inside I believe it was two as of last report two suicide bombers who um, who blew themselves up rather than be arrested we also had two suicide bombers who blew themselves up at a luxury hotel on the seafront uh, the others targeted three churches and two other hotels and that fourth hotel and a house so there were two places a hotel and a house were also hit but they were not sure how those attacks were carried out the one being though um, where they thought they were making the bombs and uh, they were so very jittery. There are a lot of people uh, on high alert. It's, it's just, it's just horrible. And I don't know. I, we, we've had all these attacks on churches in Germany and France, but not getting a lot of publicity and um, all Catholic churches hit in Sri Lanka, which is um, really sad. Let's move on. I want to talk to you about something that's happening in New York and some other Communities around the country, you have um, measles on the rise. You've got a New York City in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. The police, uh, the New York City Health Department there declared a public health emergency for the neighbor, neighborhood of Williamsburg, very trendy neighborhood. The Commission of Health issued an order threatening civil and or criminal fines, forfeitures and penalties, including imprisonment against any guardian of an unvaccinated child six months or older who did not receive the MMR, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, within 48 hours of the mandate. They made good on that threat at the end of last week. They called three parents from separate households to appear in court for violating the or the order. The health commissioner told the Washington Post that her office did not take the emergency order lightly, calling the mandate a dramatic response to a serious problem. And the same day, a judge in New York dismissed a lawsuit brought against the city's Department of Health by five parents who were fighting the order. According to the Daily Beast, Kings County Supreme Court Justice Lawrence uh, Kneipel, Kneipel uh, debunked all of the plaintiff's, plaintiff's arguments, and the parents reportedly presented objections on medical, religious, and moral grounds. 
Health officials have shut down four schools last week, a preschool this week, for refusing to confirm or deny that all of their attendees had received the MMR shot. New York City Health Department counted 359 confirmed cases of measles in Brooklyn and Queens since October. I have very mixed emotions on this. I don't know. I don't like the government telling me what I have to give my child as far as medicine goes. I I don't I kind of like that. The other part of me says well, if you can prevent your child from having getting a horrible disease, well, not, I mean, all right, measles isn't horrible, terrible, but you look at the pictures and some of these kids get the get it in like their eyes. It can kill you. Uh, and if you don't have to put your child through that, why do you put your child through that? So that does bother me. Here's Patricia Ruppert, who is the Rockland County Commissioner of Health on the measles outbreak in Rockland County. This is also in New York. We have 186 cases of confirmed measles in Rockland County, with many more that are unreported at this time. We have 84.4% of them have been diagnosed in those who are 18 years of age and under. There have been no deaths associated with this outbreak, thankfully, although there have been many complications, including multiple hospitalizations and five admissions to the intensive care unit, as Mr. Day has, has mentioned. The Rockland County Department of Health has redoubled its effort to combat this measles outbreak. And, and that's the problem. And I have, I've had people say, well, why should I have to vaccinate my children? If your kids are vaccinated, what do you care? Here's the problem. Kids, infants can't be vaccinated. They, they, you have to be a certain age before you can be vaccinated. You expose my infant to a disease that could kill my infant. I have a problem with that. It, you, you know, it's, it's like it's and so who was I talking to? Somebody said something about like, well, you don't see a lot of people with with polio. Why do we need the vaccine? And you're like, because everybody got the vaccine, which is why there aren't people walking around with polio. It's how that works. And as a kid, nobody got the measles. Nobody got the measles because we all got the vaccine as kids. Now, I think there are a lot of vaccines that are mandated by the government. And I think as a parent, you should have the right to say, I want to spread them out for my child. You, You know, chicken pox vaccine. I don't know if I were a parent, if I would get that vaccine for my kid. I'd probably just have my kid get chicken pox. My parents did that, right? Uh, people who are elderly, people who are sick and have a weakened immune system, none of those people can get vaccines. So why should they be put at risk when they don't have to be put at risk if you just get vaccinated? That's not fair to people who are maybe getting chemo for cancer who can't be vaccinated a kid or someone who's older who has a weakened immune system who can still get back who can get measles and remember there's a certain i was listening to abc news this morning because they're on it because i get up at three o'clock in the morning and so they have a live broadcast at three o'clock in the morning and and i was listening to it and they were saying that if you got you the vaccine well if you're born before i think it was like 1950 something 1956 something like that if you were born before then you don't have to worry because you got the measles there was no vaccine and if you were born in a certain period in the 60s if that's when you got vaccinated during the certain period in the 60s they said you may not be immune even though you got the vaccine because there was apparently faulty batches of the vaccine at that time which i thought oh great I'm like oh gosh when did i get vaccinated you know, i don't ID, i don't know but people go overseas, they're not vaccinated, they come back, they infect everybody on the plane. They infect, they walk through the mall, they infect people, they're at the doctors, wherever they happen to go to school. And they're just infecting people as they go along. Now, why not vaccinate your kid? Dr. Anthony Fossey on CNN has some reasons why. The philosophical reasons to not get vaccinated can generally be you know, divided into a couple, one of which is misinformation. The misinformation that has been propagated that the vaccine is not safe or that it causes autism, which is completely untrue. And when you get a certain percentage of a community, in this case, it's the Hasidic Jewish community in New York City, who get below a certain percentage of the community that's vaccinated, then you have great vulnerability for the kinds of outbreaks that we're seeing in New York City. And it's completely avoidable. That's the frustrating aspect about it. It's completely avoidable. Yeah, it's, it's the Jenny McCarthy School of Medicine. Well, Jenny McCarthy read uh, a study that vaccines are you, you, uh, cause um, ADD, right? ADHD and, and all sorts of other things. And um, autism was the big one. Autism, not ADD, sorry, autism. 
and it was a, it was a study that's been de- debunked and proven not true. And the guy who did the study has been censored, and I think he had his license taken away. And it, it was a faulty study. And I, I marvel at people. I'm like, so you're going to believe Jenny McCarthy, the former Playboy model, Playboy playmate, you're going to believe Jenny McCarthy over science and doctors. Now, can some people have a reaction to it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's a small percentage. And you have to look at it and say, I don't know, Does would you rather have your kid have a, a re- reaction to the vaccine or have your kid get polio or have your kid get measles or something else? 866-408-7669. I see both sides of the story here. I don't like the government telling me what to do. At the same time, I do think that there is a value to having people get the vaccine. Get your calls coming up. Mary Walter in for Brian Kilmeade. Don't go anywhere. Brian Kilmeade will be right back. The following is not an actor, but a real-life story from Trinity Debt Management. I had a lot of credit card debt, and I couldn't pay my bills. I was feeling so bad. I got to a point where I needed some help, so I reached out and contacted Trinity. If you're in debt and you need help, call Trinity at 1-800-794-0437 to talk to a certified counselor. They were able to take all of my different payments and put them all together. Trinity will consolidate your accounts into one easy-to-manage monthly payment, put a stop to late fees and over-limit charges, reduce your interest, and possibly improve your credit score. You'll save thousands. And they were actually able to work with my creditors. I've been able to pay off close to $15,000 in the last 18 months. If your debt has you down, call Trinity at 1-800-794-0437. My name is Stephanie, and I'm debt-free for keeps. 1-800-794-0437. America will never be a socialist country. The president's right, but a proposal from the Department of Health and Human Services would adopt socialist price controls from foreign countries. This international drug pricing index would cripple American medical innovation, delay access to life-saving therapies, and mean fewer cures. Reject socialist price controls at protectmypartb.org. Paid for by Americans for Tax Reform. Hey guys, your prostate should be the last thing on your mind, but the fact is, the older you get, the more likely you'll have prostate problems, which can affect your everyday life. That's where Prostate Complete by Real Health comes in. Prostate Complete is the result of 20 years of experience as a leader in men's health. The powerful formula in Prostate Complete supports natural prostate function and reduced urinary urges for a better quality of life. Available at Walmart, visit prostateoneperday.com for special offers. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Go, Caleb! Come on, hit a homer, Jesse. Let's go, guys. Hey, did you guys know that kids who play sports earn more money when they grow up? <laughs> of course. I I knew that. Hey, did you guys know that kids who read books have a bigger vocabulary? Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow, Jinx. <laughs> did you guys know that friendly children have more friends? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's true. I knew that. Did you guys know that winter babies are better at music? Everyone knows that. Oh, yeah? (laughs) Yeah, It's pretty obvious. Yeah, Yeah. so obvious. Oh, hey, guys, did you know that most people think they're using the right car seat for their kid, but they're not? Huh, I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure I knew that. I'm pretty sure you didn't. Parents who really know it all know for sure that their child is in the right car seat at the right age and size. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to make sure your child is protected. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. The Dean's List with Janice Dean. A nurse who adopted an abandoned baby makes today's Dean's List. Liz Smith is the Senior Director of Nursing at Franciscans Children's in Boston. It was there that her life changed forever. Approaching 40 with no kids of her own, Liz had learned that having a baby might not be in the cards for her. That's when a baby girl named Giselle was born. Giselle weighed over just one pound when she was born, and her mom, who was addicted to drugs, could not take care of her. She had complex medical needs. Liz fostered Giselle, initially with the goal of eventually reuniting her with her birth parents. And for a while, they came to visit. But then the visits gradually decreased and stopped entirely. So Liz's goal changed 
to adoption. 533 days after Liz first encountered Giselle, the two finally share a last name. She never expected it, but Liz went from nurse to mom, and Giselle went from a frail preemie to a beaming little girl. Liz and Giselle, you make our heart sing. Thank you for sharing your story. Janice Dean, Fox News. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-96-STEEL. Call now to lock in your price. 866-96-STEEL. That's 866-967-8335. The fastest three hours in radio. You're with Brian Kilmeade. Measles. Once again, educational efforts are vital. Vaccine is preventable. But I'll remind you all, it's a highly contagious disease that causes pneumonia, encephalitis, which is swelling of the brain, and death. Thankfully, we've seen no deaths. We hope we don't. Measles is easily preventable with our safe and effective MMR vaccine. Newborns, pregnant individuals, and those with weakened immune systems can't get vaccinated. So it's important that everyone around them become vaccinated to protect them from contracting the virus that has serious complications. And that again is Patricia Rupert from Rockland County, the commissioner of health there on the measles outbreak in Rockland County, New York. I just want to throw this into the mixer because I have very mixed emotions on all of this. I could see both sides to this story. Uh, Democrats in six states in Arizona, Colorado, New Jersey, Washington, New York and Maine have co-authored or sponsored bills to make it harder for parents to avoid vaccinating their school aged children. They're facing opposition from the GOP. West Virginia and Mississippi are states that have some of the nation's strictest vaccination laws, and the Republican lawmakers there have introduced measures to expand vaccine exemptions. Washington State, one of the biggest measles outbreaks in the country, in a bill in the state Senate to narrow vaccine exemptions passed through the Health Committee without the support of a single Republican. Same thing happened in Colorado and Maine. Democrats are presenting bills to tighten the loopholes, Republicans, though, are doing the opposite. Republicans don't like to diminish the right of parental control over their kids, and they don't want to yield that power to the government. I get that. At the same time, I also understand the need to vaccinate because you choosing not to vaccinate can hurt someone else. And I kind of figure my your rights end where mine begin. I'm a big fan of that. It's a very, very difficult question. I was so so surprised to hear that, that Democrats are going the way that I would think most Republicans would go. It was almost flip-flopped. 866 A lot of people want to weigh in on this. Let's go to Maria uh, listening on WHIO in Dayton, Ohio. Maria, good morning. Hi. Good morning, Mary. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I've talked to Brian before, and he's my favorite voice in talk radio, and uh, you're doing a really good job filling his place today, so thank you. Thank I like you. the diversity of uh, conversation you've had with so far on the topic. But, um, so I live in a community where a lot of people homeschool their kids and they are unvaccinated, and I actually should interject that it's kind of a liberal community. So you know, there are liberals who also unvaccinate their kids and believe in the right to do that for their own personal reasons. But I'm a mother of three who has vaccinated all of my kids on schedule. Um, and I know that the ingredient thimerosal was a concern for a lot of parents. And when my kids were, my kids are 13, 15, and 27. One eight hundred number people could call to check on bad batches, or the, you know, they actually, literally, they'd have statistics on the number of uh, problems they'd have with any given batch, or the reports back from parents about you know behavior or things that happened afterwards. So 
there were bad batch lists in the day, and I don't know if that, you know, there's probably these days folks can certainly look on the families can look on the online and see, but um, I think that, you know, people should really look at the numbers and consider and really realize that the the risks, um, the you know, the benefits of vaccinations way outweigh the risks. But I did want you to know that there are definitely people in a liberal community, the one I live in, that definitely uh, feel that people have the right to do what they want to do. So, you know, um, it's interesting, but that's what that's the way I thought it would be. You know, I, I didn't think it would be Democrats trying to force more people to get vaccinated and Republicans saying, no, you can't force people to do that. It was just very flip floppy to me when, when I saw that, because my image is exactly what you're saying, where the more liberal people would be like the more liberal aspects, uh, enclaves would be more like, you can't tell me what to do. I'm not going to, you know, you know, vaccinate my kid. But it's the Democrats who are saying that you should and the Republicans who are going after it. So. It's very odd. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you you joining us. Rand Paul last month said he had his own children vaccinated, but he doesn't believe the government should mandate that it be done. Let's speak to Dr. Jeff in Burlington, Vermont on WVMT. Dr. Jeff, good morning. You're on the Brian Kilmeade Show. How are you? Good, thank God. Good morning, Mary. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm vaccinated. <laughs> so am I. You know, for perspective, um, to help you feel better, because I I have some of the feelings like you do about the government mandating things, but to feel better about that, think of quarantining. That's pretty much the extreme of the government taking its power against the, the will of the people. In public health emergencies where it could be the entire country that could suffer like in the 1918 flu with with uh, 20% of the people dying you you need a government to protect people who don't know the information and can't make those decisions the other thing i wanted to talk about i thought you may have mentioned chickenpox mm-hmm. and where the chickenpox vaccine may be not as important because it's just chickenpox and i wanted to tell you you know before we had the chickenpox vaccine you know, there'd be people who were getting severe illness, and there was nothing we could do to prevent it, and there was little we could do to treat it. The worst case that I've ever seen of a human with pneumonia and can't, can't oxygenate his body, the bluest person I've ever see, seen live had chickenpox pneumonia, 21-year-old, and you know, in a coma, unconscious, couldn't breathe, and we couldn't oxygenate him because of chicken pox pneumonia. And to know now that this is totally preventable with almost no risk, it's it's a no-brainer. But isn't, I only have 30 seconds, but isn't it worse as an adult? And that's why as kids, my mother made us go play with Greg Howells. His, his mom had a party and Olga and Donnie and Joy and my brother and I had to go over and play with Greg to all get the chicken pox as children. Right, and and we didn't know about these complications with meningitis and pneumonia. So now that we know, we don't we don't intentionally get children the illness either. But okay, so not even for the kids, because my I remember right. my mother telling me if you get it when you're older, it's going to be way worse. It's going to be terrible. Well, that's that's why you have to get it as a child. So we all had to go play with Greg. <laughs> so it's true, but the thinking is a little bit a uh, little bit different. Different now, okay. All right, because I, I was like, oh, all right, we have to go get infected. So we all, we all got infected. We're all sick at the same time. We're all miserable at the same time. Dr. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us. More of this uh, coming up. Like I said, I can see both sides to it. But vaccinations, measles at epidemic levels in some areas. I'm Mary Walter and for Brian Kilmeade.